waterproofing a shower, in my opinion, is 100% totally unnecessary. Waterproofing a shower means that you had a problem. And in 20 years, I have yet to have a problem with uh, showers in particular, with as far as uh, whatever backer board is being used, the tile is falling off the wall, the backer board is falling off the wall, water penetration is getting into the tile and or the grout. Um, and causing a huge issue where I get called on. It's never, ever happened. That's never happened. The only time I ever get called when walls are falling apart is usually on a tub, tub surround specifically, because they put the wall board on top of the edge of the tub instead of the lip, which is supposed to be the wall board is on the lip. And they're usually using sheetrock, which is okay, had they put it on the lip and not the edge of the tub. And then water gets in there, and yes, you have a problem. Um, but that wouldn't, waterproofing your walls wouldn't help anything because it's the bottom of the wall board that's getting wet, not the outside. Having said that, uh, the water penetration into a pan can be a problem. So I do, uh, even though I do my walls, I think it's unnecessary, I do my pan um, and my curb and all those areas where I find failures. I have to find a failure for there to be a solution. There has to be a solution to a problem, a problem has to exist, and I'm just not running into that. Having said that, I still red guard all of my showers because, I don't know, it's peace of mind, insurance in your brain, <laughs> but it, to me, it's totally unnecessary. It's also a crack prevention membrane, and if you read the PDF on red guard on custom building products website, you'll see that they use it on, on concrete, uh, where cracks are at and stuff like that to prevent cracking. Anyway, uh, getting on to my whole point of this video, um, I I do my showers out of green board, and there are different types of wall board out there. This is Hardy Backer. Hardy Backer is 90% um, Portland cement. They don't tell you what the other 10% is, um, and it's a good product. I don't have an issue with it per se, but it's very very difficult to score and snap. And get a clean cut you have to take it outside and use a skill saw in that same light uh, this is oops this is a cement board and i'm just going to use that as just just a broad statement because there's different types of cement board this is happens to be dura rock and dura rock you can see is very very porous there's a lot a lot of pores in here so getting red guard to go in here requires a minimum of two coats sometimes three um, this will require uh, two coats to get on something that would actually be waterproof. Um, this this definitely is about three coats um, with a roller, and then you have to make sure that all these little pores are are uh, you know the the red guard is inside of all these little pores. I use green board as a rule, and the reason I use green board is because this has a mold and mildew product embedded in it, chemically treated to prevent mold and mildew. This does not, and that does not, and I've seen that beget mold and mildew when it's exposed to water. I've seen this beget mold and mildew when exposed to water, and I actually put that on my videos. You can go back. I don't know, I don't know what video it would be, but I've taken this up where I have seen mold and mildew creep its way up 16, 18, 20 inches high, black mold and mildew, because people still continue to put their wallboard inside of the shower pan. You know, two or three inches of the wallboard is embedded in the shower pan. And there's another YouTuber on there that says, you can do that <laughs> with this backer board, and that's a lie. Don't believe that. Don't ever put your wallboard, no matter what it is, have your wallboard is sitting up above your shower pan material, and then your tile goes in the gap. That way, there's no jump of the water into the board. Anyway, uh, without further ado, I have decided, because a lot of people give me a hard time, regardless that this is uh, mold and mildew. Now, having said that, once I paint on a couple coats of Red Guard on here, then it's innocuous. The, the, the mold and mildew chemical that they embed in this board um, is not going to do any good because it's never going to see any water. So it's kind of a mood issue at that point. But in that same light, the same could be said for this. The same could be said for this, the same could be said for cardboard. If I had half inch cardboard, I could paint it with red guard and it would be 100% waterproof and I have no compunction whatsoever about putting tile on it, spraying water on it forever, and no water is gonna ever see that cardboard. So I'm gonna go to an extreme. This is just plain old sheetrock. 
This is not uh, anything special. This is basically just uh, paper gypsum. And paper gypsum is basically what this is, except this is better, in my opinion. Um, so, for all the naysayers that I get, and I have a lot of them out there that say, you know, you must do this and you must do that, and the sky is falling, there's going to be a failure if you don't do X, Y, Z. I'm going to do a little experiment because I have a little free time and I have a little extra material on hand. So, I'm, I'm going to, for your benefit, not for mine, because I have a video out there, um, I don't know how many views it has, uh, but I painted a cardboard box, and what I was getting to with what your backer board is doesn't matter because it's waterproof, so it's irrelevant. That cardboard box, um, I painted, I think, three coats inside that cardboard box, and I let it set from a Saturday to another Saturday. And there was a little bit of evaporation, but no water ever penetrated the cardboard. And I haven't gone back on it lately to, um, to see that video, but it has quite a few views. This is not for me. This is for you. <laughs> this is for you. Here, where's the camera at? This is for you. This is not for me. I'm confident in this product. I use it continually. Um, and the manufacturer, in fact, I think on that particular video that I showed you, Custom Building Products chimed in. They said, yeah, we don't really recommend this for sheetrock, but thanks for the video. And, and you know, it's their product, and they're saying don't use it on, on, on a gypsum type of product um, because paper is not what, what specifically they want it for. Again, go to the PDF, and you'll find out all the information for those uh, engineer hats that want to know all that stuff. So when I threw this together, there's a, there's a couple of holes, I don't know if you can see them. There's a hole there because part of the wood chip, I use screws instead of nails. Um, I think there's part of par, partial hole right there, and that's going to get filled in with the red guard. So I don't even care about that, that doesn't even matter. In fact, there is a through and through hole right at the edge here because I messed up on a screw. Um, and so there's a through and through hole, and I'm going to fill that with red guard too. So what I'm going to do on here is in, in in light of uh, the many complaints that I get about using grain board on my showers, I'm going to paint this with only two coats. And I always suggest where there's a where there's a plane difference, um, whether this is part of the wall and this is the other part of the wall, that you use three coats here, that you use three coats on the curb, blah, blah, blah. I'm only going to use two coats in here. And I'm going to fill it up with water. This is about two inches or so. Um, height and I'm going to fill it completely with water and I'm going to let this set for a week also so that video I did with cardboard box um, th That's why I said this video is not for me. It's for you cardboard is uh, <laughs> Is not going to be Cardboard is basically going to be like this is, is what I'm getting at and because I know the cardboard worked I, I there's 101 percent surety that this will work also after a week of water sitting in here, and I'll fill it up on occasion, um, there'll be no penetration into the sheetrock, without a doubt. Paper, not even cardboard, without a doubt. And that's how confident I am in this product. The only thing I'm going to do different, oh, by the way, another thing too. Another thing that I did not do, that I would do on a normal application of this stuff, where the seams are, where this wood is, let's suppose this was sheetrock or whatever backer board, where the seams are, I'm filling those in. So typically on a shower, I'm filling that in with thin set. Um, I'm not doing that in this case. All I'm going to do is put, like I said, the two coats of Red Guard, and it's going to fill that seam, and it's going to be waterproof. So the only thing I'm going to do a little different in this case is because I have that one hole on the side right there. I'm going to fill that in pretty thick, and then the wood is also going to get the red guard as well and without a doubt this will be waterproof so with red guard specifically it goes on pink as you can clearly see and uh, it dries red bright red or a dark red as it were and then some people kind of freak out as I did when I first started using this product once it dries dark red, you can put some water on it, and you see a pink coming through again. And what happened with me is I'm like, oh no, this stuff turned back to, <laughs> to its liquid state again because it's pink instead of dark red. Um, and that's actually not true. I'm going to give it about probably 
about 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes for that to dry. And then I'll put the second coat on and that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to let it set for about, uh, probably about an hour to get it good and dry because some of the some of the material underneath might not be completely dry so I don't want to fill up the water right away but I'm going to make sure that it's completely dry and then I'm going to fill it up as much to the top of the water and leave it in one spot so I'm not disrupting anything. Um, if, if all the cracks are filled right now, which I don't know that they are, but if all the cracks are filled right now, I'm 100% convinced that I could put water in there now and it would still be waterproof. And you can clearly see that there's, there's you know, some of the sheetrock still showing. So obviously when, by the time I put the second coat on, you know, I'm going to be good to go. And it's been about an hour. As you can see, it's dried kind of a dark red. There's still a little bit of pink in there. Uh, so it's not completely dry. But for my purposes, it's dry enough. When using this stuff, almost all bathrooms I run into nowadays do not have functional windows. Some do, but most don't nowadays. Make sure that you open a window, put a fan inside the window blowing out because this stuff is really noxious to breathe. In fact, I usually wear a mask because I don't have a functional window, but even if you have a window, I suggest you use a mask also. You know, a good industrial type of mask, not the little paper ones. Because uh, this stuff will mess you up after a while. I've had that happen a few times. So that's it. That's, uh, oops, a little, that screw hole that was there. That's it. So that's two coats that, uh, that I put on there. And as I said, two coats on a, a solid surface like that is sufficient that's why on my wall board whatever I use you know I'm putting two coats on that three coats in the corners three coats on the curb if you have a bench three coats on the bench and of course a niche I usually put three coats in there too let me put something so that you know there's only two coats in here I'll put a leaf there so you know that I haven't put a third coat in there <laughs> just so you know that I haven't cheated on this um, Probably about an hour and a half, two hours or so, I'll let it cure a little bit, and then I will go ahead and, and fill it up. I will put it in one spot, and as I said, if there's any evaporation of the water, then I'll add a little extra, you know, as the days go by. Um, but I'll leave it like that. Today is Monday. I'm going to leave it like that to probably Saturday. So that'll give it a good five days to absorb any water. Um, although it won't, but as I said, you'll get to see... Uh, the end result. And let the test begin. See how that water beads with only two coats, which is all you need on your wall. Anyway, if you were to put three coats on, it would be overkill, but it wouldn't help you any. Wow, I got two cups in there. Two full cups of water and uh, yeah we'll let it set. This is the thing that was kind of tripping me out when I first started using Red Guard. See how it's starting to turn pink in certain areas? It's fascinating because it's definitely not turned back to liquid. Impossible for it to do that but it's just weird how, how that happens. It's starting to do that everywhere. I actually came up with a kind of a cool idea. I'm going to take the rest of this water that's in here. None has come out so far and uh, it's nice and dry as a bone. But what I'm going to do is put it in a freezer overnight and let this all this water do whatever damage it can to this. <laughs> Should it do any damage I will definitely show you but I just figured you know in extreme type of conditions and we will see you tomorrow wow look at that
crazy. That should be interesting though. Let's see if there's any damage. I have dried this thing out and it has obviously not had any penetration of water whatsoever even in the sides which would have um, come through so it's definitely waterproof on sheetrock which I already knew Okay, so I have Curdy test here. Again, this is a cut and fold corner, and I didn't use any Curdy fix or anything. No preformed corners in this test. This has sat for 24 hours, and it appears there are no leaks. Uh, I looked at the back side here, there's no drips coming out of the back everything is dry so I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the water and then again I want to see how far the water has penetrated underneath the curdy band here and just inspect it real well I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off And so what it looks like to me is that the water penetrated maybe a quarter inch on this side, maybe a quarter inch, a little more on that side. And then in the corner where my uh, pinhole was, where the overlap, there is a little bit of water in there looks like just a tiny bit of moisture did uh, seep through there. Again, you can see the back side of the dent shield here. There's no, no moisture at all. You can see no, no water came through it. Um, but again, what I'm really interested in is to see how far water penetrates under here. So let me see what happens when we peel it off. And I used a modified speed, speed set, um, Mape's uh, Rapid Set. It bonds a lot better than non-modified. So Schluter, get your act together and approve all modified thin sets. Um, okay, what's interesting on this one is I had no, there's no moisture at all that um, got underneath. You can see there is literally no, no seepage underneath. And that, again, might be due to the fact that I used a modified speed set on this. Um, there's no moisture whatsoever in that corner. Um, this little spot's just a pocket uh, where the thin set didn't fill all the way in. But this is absolutely bone dry.
Okay, it is now Sunday. We've had a leak here. I'm just checking this. I haven't been here since Friday. This crew room must have a hole in it somewhere because it is leaking out the whole water. Weedy board and credit board with the face remove is holding water fine. Okay, here we are back. I'm going to be doing one more test here. This is with the curdy board, just bond it with the curdy fix. And as you know from the previous test, this does not seal, this will fail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try one more method, which many um, tall guys do. They use curdy board, okay? And they use a liquid waterproofing membrane. In this case, we're gonna use Laticrete Hydroband. Ordinary cup of water. Two cups of water in there. Let's see if it stays. Let's uh, oh, no, no need, no need to even work a line. We'll know if it's weak. I'll start staying this plywood. It's been sitting for about three, four hours, and I see zero leaks. I mean, this thing is not on water, no problem. Soil and water, no problem. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then subscribe. Hit that button and subscribe. I make nothing off of YouTube, so please be a Patreon member. I'm going to post a link down below to my Patreon account, and you can donate a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars a month. Just pledge that that on a monthly basis. That will help me produce more videos and and content so that you can watch and learn from my channel. And donate at least fifty dollars if you're going to call. If you're going to call for advice, donate to my PayPal, please. Donate first, and then feel free to call me or email me uh, for advice. Otherwise, business calls only, please.